Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. Dan Dan the Artman's Book Reviews, Episode 52, Invito Rex by Brand Gamblin. I just finished this novel, and I'm not entirely sure what I feel about the ending, because it is quite an ending, but I loved the book. Maybe as I write this review, I'll discover my feelings on it. For now, let's get to why I loved this novel. First off, there are some really cool things in this book. Some really cool games that Brand invented and an awesome automaton. Who would not like a game called Bear Polo? I mean, (laughs) that's just cool. Early on in the novel, there is a very important game of Bear Polo that is played, and what happens in the game pushes the rest of the story forward. Yes, dudes riding on big, majestic bears in a polo match. While I'm talking about games... There is another really cool game in the book called Circus. It's kind of like chess, but the board is circular and with a checkerboard pattern radiating out from the center. I really enjoyed how Brand described the different game pieces, how they moved, and what they symbolized. It was some pretty witty stuff. There is actually a graphic of the board game, which you can see below, Uh, pause, that's if you're looking at the old, um, the blog post I wrote that just has this book review in text. It's, uh, Tuesday, March 6th, 2014 on dandantheartman.com, or you can just search Dan Dan the Artman in Vito Rex book review. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. Now let's get back to that review. There is actually a graphic of the board game, which you can see below. I'll actually put this in the show notes so you can just see it right on the blog post that goes with this podcast, because it's really cool. Really cool stuff, right? Yeah, since you're listening and you might be driving and I don't want you to look away from the road, I'll just describe it to you if you can't check it out later. It's um, a board that is in the shape of a circle. There's a black circle in the middle, and then four sections of a white circle outside of that. And then outside of that, there are eight sections alternating between black and white, and then it just keeps going out from there. So there's like rings of a checker, circular checkerboard pattern radiating out from the center. And it's really cool, and he describes in the book how the game works. All right, back to the review. Moving on, I really like the characters in this book, especially the main character, Dizzy. He was very real and fleshed out brilliantly. His witty dialogue often had me laughing as he diffused tense situations. It helped that I read this book by listening to the audio version over at patiobooks.com. Brand did a wonderful job with the dialogue. He's not bad at accents, either and sometimes he drastically changes the pitch of his voice, but it's never cheesy. He doesn't go high for girls, but rather low for certain characters. Brand has a good low grumble voice that works great for some characters. As I think back on this novel, there was a lot of dialogue, and it really brought the characters and story to life. Something just struck me. I don't usually like books with a lot of conversations, but I loved this book, and much of it was conversation. I'm struggling through The Way of Kings right now, because there's just so much talking that I'm really bored. And I have loved all of Brandon Sanderson's other novels. That's The Way of Kings, the first book in the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson, a book that I struggled through until the third act, the last quarter of the book. From there on, I loved it, and I loved book two, but I was honestly very bored through most of book one. 
All right, back to the review. Usually I get bored when a book is full of dialogue, but that's when nothing is happening. Huge info dumps where you learn about the story world, but meantime the story isn't moving forward. The characters are just sitting there yammering on and on. Thankfully, that's not what it was like in this book. A lot of great stuff happens, but as I'm thinking back on the story, a lot of it was conversations, and I loved every minute of it. They were conversations that moved the story forward. Maybe it's because they fit the story so well. The main character has been newly appointed as king, and there is a lot he has to figure out. His interactions with the nobility and other characters was really fun to read, and many times hilarious. Dizzy did not act in a way that he was expected to as king. Seeing him shock, surprise, and disturb the ways of the royal court and meetings was good fun. The other character I loved is the one you can see on the cover named Scepter. He's a crown, or a bracelet, or a robot, or any number of things. He is with the king at all times, recording everything and assisting the king. I found myself wanting to talk in very proper grammar while listening to this book. All the stately noblemen Dizzy interacts with tends to rub off on you, kind of like when you watch Downton Abbey. Okay, about the ending. I will not spoil anything in this review, but I will say that I had to stop and reread the ending three times. It was something I was not expecting, but it did make sense. They say that the big moment in a book should be surprising, but seem inevitable as you look back on the story and everything leading up to it. In this way, Brand did well writing the ending. He told me on Twitter that he's had violently mixed reviews. Now that I've read it, I can see why. For me, it was pretty great the more I think of it, and I will be thinking about the ending of this book for a long time, but it still ticked me off. The only way to know what I'm talking about is to read the book yourself. I highly recommend it. If you haven't read the book that comes before it, The Hidden Institute, I loved that one as well, and you should read it first. As I post this, Brand is about 70,000 words into the next book in the series, so if the ending catches you in a bad way, let's see what he does with it in the next book. I'm really looking forward to it. He has a lot to explain. Awesome. Well, man, I did really like that book. And I haven't read the third one, but I bet it's already out, so I'm going to go check that out. Um, I have some great news for you guys, the listeners of this podcast. I'm sponsored by Audible, so if you go to audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews, you can get a free audiobook. You can already get a free audiobook of In Vito Rex by Brand Gamblin by going to patiobooks.com. So let me recommend to you this week... The book that came after that last Dan Wells book that I just reviewed, I reviewed The Devil's Only Friend, and I just finished Over Your Dead Body, which is the book that comes after The Devil's Only Friend. Uh, It leaves you in a really great place where you really want to read the next book in the series. It's by Dan Wells, and it's narrated again by Kirby Hayborn, who's just an amazing narrator for this series. Over Your Dead Body by Dan Wells, narrated by Kirby Hayborn, follow John Cleaver on his adventures hunting and killing demons, and trying not to become a serial killer himself, as he is a sociopath. (laughs) So, but you can get any book of your choice, if you just get this free trial at Audible, you get a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook, but I highly recommend Over Your Dead Body by Dan Wells, narrated by Kirby Hayborn, at audibletrial.com slash Dan's Book Reviews. So thank you to Audible for sponsoring this podcast, and if you go get a free audiobook, it helps support the show, so thank you too. Now, let's get back to that review. Man, that was an awesome long review. 
I don't have much more to say other than this book was really cool. Like I said, there's a lot of dialogue. The dialogue is awesome. Some of the characters speak in a very, like, proper way, and then there's a lot of, like, street slang, and then there's the robot slash crown that's always following the king around. And, uh, this book was really awesome, surprising, and it cracked me up over and over again. It was a really enjoyable read. Definitely go check it out. It's called Invito Rex by Brand Gamblin. And if you're like me, and sometimes you prefer to listen to stories because you can't find the time to read them, go to patiobooks.com and get it for free read by the author. And he is an excellent narrator and did a great job on the audiobook version of this book. But it'd also be really cool if you went and bought the book to support the author. All right. I'm glad that I reviewed a book by Brand Gamblin because I've been following him online for a long time. And he's just a cool guy, and his books are really rad, so. I almost forgot to mention, it's November, which means NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. You try and write 50,000 words during the month of November, which is about 1,667 words every day. I'm doing NaNoWriMo. I've been doing it every year for, like, I don't even know seven years now or something. I've only actually won the very first time I did it, and then the year after that, but I think I'm gonna win this year. I'm, like, keeping up pretty well. It's only day three right now. But I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the book I'm writing, because I think it's very original and pretty fun. (laughs) It's called Ghost Slaying Realtor, and it's about a realtor who finds underneath a church in this little room on this podium a box with a ring and a pair of glasses inside and then on the table behind that there's a sword but you can only see the sword if the glasses are on and even then you can't even touch the sword your hand just goes through it but if you're wearing the ring then you can wield the sword and then the sword doesn't really seem to do anything it just goes through everything as if just like when your hands went through it if you tried to grab it without the ring on. But eventually our hero finds that this sword kills ghosts. So being a greedy, money-grubbing realtor that he is, not that that's what realtors are, but he's a realtor and he's a greedy guy, he decides to go find mansions that are for sale for practically nothing because they're haunted so no one can sell them. He buys them for dirt cheap, kills the ghosts inside, uh, and then renovates the house and makes a huge profit. Eventually, though, he's going to have to use his tools to help someone and even get over himself and become a hero because he's just a jerk in the beginning. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. You can find me on NaNoWriMo. Become my writing buddy on there. It's really fun. If you're not doing it, it's a great way to jumpstart writing a book. And it's, it's an awesome community, and it's so fun to put your word count for the day in the website and see the little meter fill up with more. And then you try and fill the meter all the way by the end of November and get to 50,000 words. Uh, it's an absolute blast. I hope you're doing it. I just do it every year, even if I know I won't be close to winning, because it still helps me to write more words than I probably would have during this month. But I think I'm going to get there this month, and I'm really excited about my story. It's really fun so far, so... NaNoWriMo.org That's N-A-N-O-W-R-I-M-O dot org Check it out. Find me on there. We can chat. It's super fun. And that's all I got for you guys this week. Alright, so check out Brand Gamblin' and all of his awesome books, and I'll see you next week. Mike, take it away. This podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivative works license. Music by Kevin McLeod, found at incompetech.com. The website that goes with this podcast can be found at dandantheartman.com. And you can follow Dan on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at dandantheartman. For Dan, this is Mike Luoma saying happy reading, and we'll see you next time.